to Vasa the Sunlit versus Azuri, Renegade Leader. I used to run this myself. I haven't played that deck in a long time, so it's probably very much out of date. Abundant Growth can go onto a forest, so yeah, we'll keep that. We have Herald of the Pantheon. Then we can go into Tuvasa, and hopefully at some point we'll actually get into lands. Yeah, Abundant Growth will allow the forest to tap for a mana of any colour. And when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. Okay, Sigil of the Empty Throne is good if we get into other enchantments. And that actually curves us out quite nicely because Herald of the Pantheon makes enchantments cost one less, so this will cost four. So we've got turn two, three, and four sorted out now. Okay, so we just go in for an island. Herald of the Pantheon. And we'll leave it like that. A turn one mana dork from the elf player, as you would expect. Don't think we'll be seeing an Azuri on turn two. It's usually a lord that they'll go in for after this. Azuri Renegade Leader has... Is that Overrun? Five mana for elf creatures get plus three, plus three, and trample until the end of the turn. It can also regenerate other elves for a single green. It's three mana for a two-two. Uh, an Auron Reef, the Vasswood, that can put plus counters on creatures that just entered. They went in for a Lightning Greaves to protect their powerful lords that I imagine they're going to get into. Let's go, yeah, we have to get a White Source down. So we'll shock that into play. Down comes to Vasa. That is a three mana bank commander. A 1-1 one, one that gets a plus one plus one buff per enchantment we control. And whenever we cast our first enchantment spell each turn, we draw a card. We'll go in for two on our opponent. And I think we put a stop on the upkeep as well because we might want to get something with that enlightened tutor. Could get rid of the lightning greaves. Yeah, I don't think getting rid of Lightning Greaves is terrible. So an Oblivion Ring will be good. And yeah, definitely with an Elvish Archdruid in play, that's exactly the type of Lord we're worried about. Gives other Elves plus one and taps for green per Elf our opponent controls. And something tells me they're going to be controlling a lot of Elves before long. They can untap their uh, Elvish Archdruid with that. The Thousand Year Elixir. So the sooner we can get Lightning Greaves off that thing, the better. In for an O-Ring here. And we'll just go for the Tropical Island. The Abundant Growth allows us to tap that down for white, luckily. O-Ring is only going to cost us two mana. We'll gain a life and draw a card, thanks to Tuvasa. And we get into a Wasteland. Might blow up the Orem Reef with that, although Elf decks don't tend to need many lands. They're going to have a turn to take advantage of the Thousand Year Elixir that can untap the uh, the Elvish Archdruid. And they can generate even more mana off of that. I think we just have to pile in damage as best we can. Only three cards left in our opponent's hand, which is a saving grace, but they may well be cheap elves that they can buff up with their commander. Azuri Renegade Leader decks can just flood the board with creatures out of nowhere and then buff them all up by an ungodly amount. Oh, a Priest of Titania. These are either God draws or it was a God hand from our opponent. I think we want to get Sigil of the Empty thrown out as quickly as we can. They can tap down the Priest for mana because the Thousand Year Elixir allows you to activate abilities as though they had haste. That's four mana from creatures alone. Beast Whisperer comes down. Definitely another one to look out for. But they might be able to just draw a bunch of cards here by chaining together a bunch of elf creatures. If the deck is pretty much just lands and elf creatures, then that might be the way they've built it anyway. And out comes Azuri. They'll draw a card from that. And they have the mana to untap one of their lords. And the more elves they get out, the more those things tap for mana. Untapping the Elvish Archdruid. And they've got a land drop to make. Now it's a plus counter on the creatures that entered this turn. And they are setting up for 
an overrun next turn, I think. Okay, smothering tithe isn't going to do too much to help us. Well, I don't really see what we're going to do here. Uh, they get trample off of this, so getting another body into play isn't going to help. The enlightened tutor is too slow. That's the problem with elves, they're really, really fast. Let's just go for the sigil of the empty throne. A sun titan doesn't help us much either. We haven't drawn into many enchantments this game, actually, which isn't very useful to us. Let's just pass the turn and give our opponent every opportunity to swing in at us quickly. Because I think they have the game won here. Never know, they might need another turn to set things up, ready for the alpha swing next turn, but I think they can generate enough mana to buff everything and hit us for lethal. That's five mana from the Elvish Archdruid. So if they untap that with the Elixir, then they can go up to nine mana. Ten mana, including the Priest of Titania. Both Lords tap down equals ten mana. Oh, and a Tooth and Nail. Uh, yeah, that's entwined, so let's see if they just go for a one-card combo here. Alright, our opponent really took his time there. Uh, gone for, well, at least it's not Avenger of Zendikar into Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, Woodland Bellower gets another creature into play. That's usually Reclamation Sage whenever I play Woodland Bellower. So they're probably going after the Sigil of the Empty Throne. No, nope, going for a Wirewood Symbiote. That's another means of untapping Lords. So yeah, it looks like it's just a setup this turn and then hopefully they'll put the foot to the floor and start actually swinging in at us. Using the one floating mana to untap the Elvish Archdruid. That will now tap for seven mana. Okay, and they're going to attack with everything to encourage us to block. Uh, we'll lose our creatures whether they activate Azuri or not, so I'm not even going to bother blocking here. We know exactly what they're doing. They're going to buff everything in response. So they could use the Wirewood Symbiote to return the Wirewood Channeler to the hand and then untap something and tap down for mana and buff everything again, but they're just deciding to tap down the Wirewood Channeler itself for mana. And that is a bunch of power coming in at us. What's that? 13, 13, that's 26 on its own. And that's 37. So there we go, Elf Ball, that's exactly how it's supposed to work. What is our opponent doing? They're really messing around here. I'm trying very hard to show patience and allow our opponent to swing in for a satisfying conclusion. And there we go. We got there in the end. That is exactly how Azuri, Renegade Leader, wants to be played. Not, however, how we want our two Vasa to play. Didn't really get into many decent enchantments there. But we'll just play another game and see if we can get something going. Tuvasa the Sunlit versus Kuan Olga Ascendant. Kuan is how I assume you pronounce that. Uh, Miri's Guile, a couple of lands. We can start with Leyline of Anticipation, so I think that is a good keep. We're on the draw as well. And we're also against a mono black player who will no doubt struggle against enchantments. They've kept a five card opening hand, so. Hopefully they don't struggle too much against us. At the beginning of the end step, if three or more creatures died this turn, you flip it over. And that flips over into, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. It becomes an enchantment. Enters as a creature for three black mana. Well, there's no need for us to get down the Miri's Guile on our turn, so we'll just wait until our opponent's end step. Won't be of any relevance, I wouldn't have thought, against a black player. Tuvasa the Sunlit is 3 mana in Bant for a 1-1. One, one. It gets a plus 1 buff per enchantment we control. And whenever we cast our first enchantment spell each turn we draw a card. 
At the end of our opponent's turn, we'll get that Miri's Guile down. Ley Line of Anticipation lets us cast spells at flash speed, by the way. And we'll look at the top three cards of our library with Miri's Guile and reorganise them. Okay, we've got an Enchantress spell there. Green Sun Zenith for the Dryad Arbor might be good. In fact, I think that's what I want to go for. I don't really want to shuffle away either of those cards, but we have an Enchantress. Oh, we have two Enchantress spells in hand, actually, so I don't feel too badly about that. Yeah, Green Sun Zenith is good in the mid to late game for getting Enchantresses out of the deck, but it's also good as a one mana ramp spell because it can grab Dryad Arbor, which is a creature forest. Okay, a Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage. I don't think much of this card and I haven't seen anyone play it yet. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, it deals two damage to them. And they can minus one to have us discard a card. I think we get rid of Stony Silence here. And the sooner we get our Enchantress effects going, the better if they're going to have us discard stuff. Let's go for the Green Sun Zenith for zero. And we'll get the Summoning Sickness off of that Dryad Arbor. Feels really bad to draw into Dryad Arbor in the late game when you're just one mana away from doing whatever it is that you need to do. So the sooner we can get that out of the way, the better. And then we'll just go for a blue and white source with the Flooded Strand. Okay, uh, keeping a dig through time on top is a good idea. We'll play an island. And we know that we've got a land for next turn as well, so that's good. Uh, yeah, we can swing in with Dryad Arbor here. We'll swing in at our opponent's Planeswalker, so they can only have us discard one more card. Now, it is pretty useful being able to play at instant speed here, because if our opponent goes for some kind of discard effect outside of the Planeswalker, then we can play something from our hand. Uh, yep, yeah, three or more creatures are not going to die this turn. So we don't really need to worry about that just yet. I say we go for our commander here. I don't think they are... Yeah, they're not ticking down their planeswalker, so they just want to leave that as an enchantment in play that will deal damage to us when we have uh, one or fewer cards in hand. Let's get down our Tuvasa. And we can actually have Tuvasa swing in as a 4-4 this turn, which means that either our opponent loses their commander or they lose a planeswalker. Uh, we'll just go for the land this turn, I think. Yeah, we can go Greater Auromancy on top and then, yeah, so we play a land. Yeah, and then we go for Enchantress's Presence and that will draw us into the Greater Auromancy. Yeah, and, we'll, and we're doing that on our turn to make Tuvasa a 4-4. And then we can cast Greater Auromancy on our opponent's turn, because that will have Tuvasa draw as a card. If we were to cast it now, Tuvasa wouldn't draw as a card, because it's the second enchantment that we're casting. So we'll draw a couple of cards on our opponent's turn. And surprisingly, they are choosing to lose their commander here. So perhaps their aim is a board wipe. I'm surprised that they're throwing their commander in the way of that. But not as surprised if it's a board wipe, which I think it is. Must be if they're willing to throw their commander away. Alright, that's good. They make a fourth land, so hopefully they can get some stuff going here. Thought Seize we are not going to bother with. So we'll just go for the Greater Auromancy now, because we do want to get some card draw on the go. Even with us discarding a card to the Thought Seas, we're still going to go up a card here. And they go after the Quarantine Field, which actually isn't terrible for us. Yeah, this is definitely it's similar to a Draw Pain Nekusar type deck. I think our plan here can be just to continue to get lots of enchantments out and buff to Vasa and get lethal damage on our opponent with commander damage. Uh, seal away. Yeah, I don't particularly care for any of those, so let's shuffle those away with the Arid Mesa. We drew a card, so we'll have one damage dealt to us by Underworld Dreams. We'll get another 
blue and white sauce, so that is Tundra. Now we can go four on Delve and four lands and maybe get into a two mana enchantment. Actually, we don't need to do it on our turn, do we? Let's just go after the Planeswalker with the Dryad Arbor and our opponent with two Vassa. I'm probably going for Dig Through Time, but we might go for Mesa Enchantress on our opponent's turn. Obviously don't want to play her out into a board wipe. Now our opponent has the mana to play their commander again. And that's exactly what they're going for. They still can't block us profitably with their commander because we have a big 5-5 to Vassa. And I don't imagine their tactic is to keep playing this and have it die in combat to blocks. Let's just get out another Enchantress effect here. And then hopefully we can get into some enchantments on the top. This way we'll draw three cards per enchantment we cast. Uh, well, apparently not. So let's go for a shuffle without... Uh, yeah, we'll go for the Eldamri's Call there. That is another shuffle effect for us, but I think we're going to go for Dig Through Time here. Look at the top seven cards of our library. Two go into our hand and the rest go on the bottom. We'll take a Soul Snare and an Argothian Enchantress. The rest can go on the bottom in any order. Now, does our opponent have a board wipe is the question. We can go for, what's it called, Sun Titan with that anyway. So I think I feel okay over committing on these Enchantresses. So here we get to draw four cards for one mana in Soul Snare. We get back into that Green Sun Zenith because it does shuffle back into our library whenever we cast it. We've got Seal of Cleansing as well, so even if our opponent does manage to kill off our creatures and flip their commander over, uh, we get to blow the enchantment up anyway, so not really worried about anything our opponent could have. Swing in with a big 6-6. Six, six. And they're just blocking again, so definitely not trying to spin that round. And I think it might be worth going for Sun Titan with the Aladamri's Call within the next few turns, because that goes well with Seal of Cleansing. That is destroy an artifact or enchantment by sacrificing it. Okay, and a Shy How done the one-eyed. Uh, Shy How. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Shy How done the one-eyed is what I'm going with. A 3-2 horsemanship, sack it, return a black card from your graveyard to your hand. You can only do it during your turn before attackers are declared. Yeah, we'll just go for the Sterling Grove here. That's another shuffle slash tutor effect for us, and it will make absolutely all of our enchantments have Shroud then. Sterling Grove and Greater Oromancy give each other Shroud. Let's just go Sterling Grove to draw some cards, and then we'll probably just cast everything else on our opponent's turn. Okay, there's a rest in peace, so we can probably go for... Well, let's swing in first. Okay, they just decide to go for the block with the Shaohu, so... Uh, what do we want to do? We have eight cards in hand, we can just discard the Maze of Ith, we don't need that. And I think we're at a point now where we are really going to be getting commander damage off on our opponent. Okay, there's a damnation. Now, can we do anything about that? Well, we can tap the Dryad Arbor for mana for a start. And then we'll put that mana into Eladamri's Call. Search for a creature and put it into our hand. We'll go for that Sun Titan. And Sun Titan will bring back our Enchantresses. And then... Yeah, I don't think there's anything else we really want to do, is there? Now, we could go for Green Sun Zenith onto another Enchantress effect, just to really quickly try and rebuild. So we'll go for the Green Sun Zenith for three. And that means we'll see three new cards on top with Miri's Guile. Let's just get the Sator Enchanter down. Okay, Copy Artifact is doing nothing, so we'll just... 
put the Enlightened Tutor on top, play a Planes, and then go for the Sun Titan. Sun Titan comes down, we'll grab back the Argothian Enchantress, because it's more difficult to remove, that has Shroud. And then I think we hold up Enlightened Tutor, or Rest in Peace, maybe even Seal of Cleansing. So we'll just get in at our opponent for two. They've only got one card in hand, and we have plenty of card draw, so I think it's just a matter of time now, before we win this one. Might actually be worth putting Vassa on top of the deck with Enlightened Tutor, and then we can play two Vassa next turn and go for unblockable damage with Thassa. Okay, painful quandary. That is worth a seal of cleansing, actually. So let's put a stop on the upkeep, and then we can go for Enlightened Tutor during the upkeep instead. We'll go seal of cleansing. The ley line of anticipation has done a lot of work for us this game. Alright, and we get into Aura Shards as well. We can either lose 5 life, or discard a card, because we cast something. We'll get rid of the Copy Artifact, because that is useless to us. And then we'll sack that and get rid of that Painful Quandaries, before it becomes too much of a headache for us. Okay, Enchanted Evening, along with the Thassa, is really good. So yeah, we're going to do some setting up this turn. We don't care about the other two cards. Let's grab Enchanted Evening. We'll go for that, and then I think we can afford both of them. We'll go for two Vasa for five mana. Oh, and unfortunately not. We're actually just shy. Uh, can we get a land out of here? No, we can't. Ugh, that feels bad. All right, well, we can go for five mana into Enchanted Evening. And then one, two, three on Thassa, and then two mana into unblockable Thassa next turn. So yeah, we can still do it. Just swinging in at our opponent. And we will get a land back. That will be the Dryad Arbor, because that taps for mana, and we might not get into a land next turn. In fact, we need to draw into the Thassa, so we won't get into a land next turn. Yeah, we can go Enlightened Tutor, put Thassa on top, and then cast an Enchantment spell during our opponent's turn, maybe the Aura Shards to draw into it. So yeah, I think we're definitely getting our opponent for a bunch of Commander damage next turn. Unless they've got Spot Removal, for to Vassa. Exile a Creature or Planeswalker. They are exiling the Sun Titan. Don't think there's anything we can do there, is there? Nope, so we will allow it. Only one card left in our opponent's hand. It might be spot removal, but we'll just have to play as best we can here to get lethal on our opponent next turn. Enlightened Tutor will put the Thassa on top of our library. And actually, I'm getting a bit of tunnel vision. We actually don't need unblockable on Thassa now. I just wanted to show this interaction to everyone. Who cares about Tuvasa because it's often you need to be able to give Tuvasa unblockable. We go Enchanted Evening. That will not only draw us a bunch of cards, but it will make all permanents enchantments. That helps against enchantment board wipes because it will wipe all lands, all permanents, everything off the board if someone does Austere Command or Merciless Eviction. And then we go in for the Thassa. And then use your imagination if there's a bunch of creatures in the way, which there aren't in this case. Then we just go in at our opponent for 22 unblockable commander damage. And that is why Enchanted Evening is in the deck. Very well played by our opponent. Uh, they didn't just quit like so many people do on Magic Online. They played to their outs and they actually got us very low there thanks to this Underworld Dreams that I was not paying quite as much attention to as I should have done. We could have gotten rid of that anyway with the Aura Shards, but because we were drawing into so many cards, that actually dealt a lot of damage to us. So had we have cast many more enchantment spells there, we would have died to the Underworld Dreams. But luckily I was paying just enough attention to not do that, so didn't throw this game away. 
Tuvasa the Sunlit versus Kuon Olga Ascendant. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.